the Silver Age Blue Beetle is back. A thrill to the adventures of Ted Cord, alias the Blue Beetle. No, I'm, I'm not Ted Cord. Well, I mean, I, who is Ted Cord? <laughs> As he teams up with fellow heroes Captain Adam, the Question, and Nightshade to battle the nefarious fanangler of feelings, Dr. Spectro. I'm not Ted Cord. DC Showcase animated shorts Blue Beetle that was included with Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. Matt Lanter is Arthur Curry Aquaman from Throne of Atlantis. I always make that voice because Sam Witwer was the voice of Orm the Ocean Master and, and I think he overacted that, although people really did love his performance. From what I hear, he's a good actor otherwise, but yeah. Throne of Atlantis! Yeah, Matt Lanter was also Anakin Skywalker, a young Darth Vader in Clone Wars. So it's funny that he was like a young Aquaman, young Darth Vader. Yeah, I thought everybody did great. David Kay is the question. Perfect. Absolutely perfect casting. Ashley Birch, I wasn't familiar with her. She was Nightshade. And Jeff Bennett, once again, was Captain Adam. Tom Kenny, I'm familiar with him. He was Dr. Spectro. So yeah, great cast. I'm not gonna really worry about spoilers in this. This is a Silver Age inspired. It's like you're watching a 60s, 70s cartoon. We're just gonna jump into it. I love the TV intro slash music. It's just flat out, once again, 60s, 70s, Silver Age, DC cartoon. Feels like you're watching Super Friends. Feels like you're watching, especially, I thought, not new Batman adventures, new adventures of Batman from the 70s. When they still had Burt Ward and Adam West, they came back, but it was very 70s. Felt a lot like that. Very 70s music. I love it. There was literally film grain on it. <laughs> like it's a 2021, you know, DC animated movie and they put film grain on it. Very cartoonish. Once again, like an animated series from the 60s, 70s. The sound effects were very cartoonish. That amplifier was stolen last week. Voice work, very big voices that they do. We need to find it. That's something I can help with. You know, meanwhile at the Hall of Justice, that type of thing. They did Batman 66 transitions. That were a lot of fun. The humor, surprisingly adult, I mean harmless, but like some moments of it were surprisingly adult, which was funny, unexpected, but for the most part, I mean, it was just fun humor. Matt Lanter, absolutely perfect. No, I'm, I'm not. As the Blue Beetle. He has a very distinct, you know, potentially like 60s, 70s voice for Blue Beetle. Yeah, you, sir, that, that, that is not, you know, justice needs to be served, that type of thing. His voice, it was very distinct from Throne of Atlantis. The second I heard that he was cast as Blue Beetle, I was like, that is perfect. He did a great job. By uh, me, Ted Cord. The question was a blast. I mean, I absolutely love the question. It was Vic Sage, the question. Some really good one-liners. He comes in, he's fighting the squid gang. I'm not here to leave mints on the pillows. I haven't lost a game of keep away yet. And then the squid gang's like, there's always a first time for everything, bughead. <laughs> line after line, suffering scarabs. <laughs> which is so 66. So much of the corny alliterations that we would get fine feathered finks. Since like many of the showcase shorts, Blue Beetle's not one of the best known DC characters. We're just gonna do some quick background on the character. This is from DC Universe Infinite. So we're dealing with a Silver Age Ted Cord, because again, this is like a Silver Age animated series. Ted Cord kept his vow to become the next Blue Beetle, but he soon discovered that the Scarab did not work for him. Nevertheless, Ted trained himself to become an expert fighter and got into prime physical shape. He also used his scientific genius to create a variety of crime fighting gadgets and also made himself a flying vehicle shaped like a large beetle, which he nicknamed the bug. Fashioning his own Blue Beetle costume, he soon established his own identity as a superhero and even without powers, came to eventually equal Dan Garrett, who was the previous Blue Beetle. And then finally, operating out of Chicago, Ted took over his father's company, Cord Omniversal, and under his guidance, it became one of the top tech companies in the world. Because this is what's most interesting. Even without powers, came to eventually equal Dan Garrett. This is almost a Batman Beyond thing insofar as Ted Cord, he's a guy who deserves the mantle, he earns the mantle, but he's not Bruce Wayne, Batman himself. But he is worthy of the mantle of Batman, or he has to prove it. And although this guy does take a very Bruce Wayne approach, it's a kind of a Terry McGinnis mantle of the Blue Beetle. Because the original hero to use the name Blue Beetle was Dan Garrett, who was an archaeologist. One day, working on a dig in Egypt, he discovered a strange blue scarab totem. What the hell is that? of an unknown age and origin. The Scarab granted Garrett incredible powers. Dan used these new powers to battle evil as one of America's quote, mystery men. During the golden age of the 1940s, the Scarab gave Garrett super strength <laughs> 
and vulnerability. To protect its host. To say that you won. I think I cut a bus in half. Flight. Five. So he got the powers of the Blue Beetle through the Scarab. So the powers for him are innate. It's almost like the Green Lantern thing versus what Ted Kord has to do, which is once again, kind of create, recreate the tech of the Blue Beetle. <laughs> 